Returning now to the situation in Russia and Ukraine, the conflict, as we know, is raging not only in the physical realm but also on the cyber front. Joining us live is Dr. Sulet Dreyfus, senior lecturer, rather, in the School of Computing and Information Systems at the University of Melbourne. Dr. Dreyfus, appreciate your time. How has big tech weighed into this war so far in terms of impacting internet services and social media boycotts in Russia, and what has the impact been? Well, I mean, it's very interesting. So we've seen this sort of war footage every day on the news, but below the surface, what's actually going on is, uh, you know, a cyber war of different elements. One element is cyber attacks on Ukraine, which has largely withstood those. But another is around information warfare, and that's both denying people, for example, in Russia access to news, but also denying them the ability to associate with each other by shutting down access to the platforms that we all use to talk about, uh, you know, things with each other. So by blocking Facebook, blocking Instagram, which is much more popular than Facebook in Russia, um, Russia is, it seems very likely, about to shut down access to YouTube. Um, these things, you know, if you think about the average person, they might spend 15% of their day gathering, reading news, that sort of thing, but 65% of their day associating with other people. And by turning off the access to these platforms, you reduce their ability to associate with other Russians. And in terms of that access to news and also the infiltration of news services in Russia, we've seen the cyber hacking group Anonymous targeting Russian news organisations. I know. What role do these hackers play? What do we know about that group Anonymous? Um, we don't know. I mean, Anonymous, uh, the sort of famous quote about Anonymous is, Anonymous is not, not unanimous, right? Because it's more than one person, more than one player, um, and they may have different motivations. So anyone, in a sense, can go out and claim to be anonymous. But we have seen that there is uh, certainly an increase in um, the call for independent activists to get on board in this war. And that's occurred really on both sides. So um, terribly uh, Russian, you know, patriotic Russians have been called to the cause for the Russian side of the war. And similarly, uh, the Ukrainian side of the war and, and, and more international support for activists to sign on to that. But I think what's really interesting is the idea, you know, that you've also seen in Russia blocking uh, access to international news, so BBC Russia, Deutsche Welle, The New York Times, um, and that's an attempt to try and get uh, Russians to not read international news. But at the same time, Russia has put in regulations uh, which have caused roughly 49 out of, say, 50 of the independent media organizations in Russia to have to shutter their, their doors. And that's because it's become basically a crime in Russia to call the war a war. You can call it a military operation, but if you call it a war, you face potentially 15 years in prison. Um, and so with that, we've seen the flight of more than 150 or so journalists out of Russia going uh, to Georgia, um, going, you know, Yerevan, Tbilisi, these are the places where many Russian journalists are fleeing because they can no longer report safely. In fact, there's really only one independent Russian media outlet for Russians, Medusa, and that only exists because a few years ago it relocated uh, out to the Balkan states. Accessing news is just one aspect, isn't it? Because social media sites have also been shut down, as you mentioned, but also payment methods being cut off as well. In terms of your average Russian trying to live their lives through their phones, as we all do every day, how is that impacting their day-to-day -day lives? Well, it's definitely impacting their day-to-day -day life. So if you're a small business person, you're selling something on Etsy or whatever, all of a sudden, you know, you can't do it. You can't do credit card transactions. But it's also actually affecting Russians' ability to get news and share news. So for, you know, if you were a person who subscribed to these independent media organizations in Russia that provided independent news, um, the Russian government, for example, in Medusa's case, one by one, 
picked off the advertisers that had been supporting uh, this news organization. So they went to a subscription model. But unfortunately, because of the um, you know financial sanctions, it's meant that all of the Russians who were paying with their credit cards to support this indie, indie media can't actually do that anymore. Um, and that's true of any number of products that Russians might be trying to buy, buy abroad. So that's created further isolation and perhaps is an unintended consequence. And in terms of what's going on in Ukraine, you mentioned that so far Ukraine has been able to withstand these cyber attacks from Russia. Uh, how much of an influence has the US and big players like Elon Musk had to do with that? And are you confident that we'll be able to maintain those strong defences on the, on the cyber front? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, Ukraine has withstood. So just, you know, think about the fact that Ukraine has really been under some form or another facing cyber attacks since 2014, when, when you had a government change there and it eventually sort of evolved into a Western-style democracy. Um, and so over those years, you've had a hardening of uh, the cybersecurity of the systems of government there. It's not perfect, but, you know, Ukraine has a few things going in its, uh, in its favor. And one of those is it graduates more than 100,000 engineers um, every year. And so it does have a pretty good talent pool. That combined with the fact it's had assistance from uh, the U.S. government uh, and some other governments to, again, harden their cybersecurity situation. I think, you know, one of the interesting things that's come out of um, the attacks on Ukraine is there, there is more of an international relationship being built between governments uh, about trying to cyber secure all societies, not just the Ukrainian one, but working together in partnership. So while there have been some successful attacks, we saw not Petya, which was um, started with an attack on a Ukrainian firm. This accounting firm had software many different other firms used, and so it was able to spread very rapidly via that. And it didn't, of course, only affect uh, Ukraine. It went all over the world. We saw Maersk, the shipping company, with you know giant container ships adrift in the Pacific uh, and other oceans because their computer networks had completely um, broken down. So you know we've seen major events like that, but from that has come a kind of a strength. Now, at the moment, you see the um, the internet is being assisted in terms of a reliable access to the internet in Ukraine by a provision of satellite services from Elon Musk and a very pleasant exchange uh, between uh, one of the Ukrainian ministers and Elon Musk on social media with the minister thanking him for um, providing uh, a number of these terminals to access Musk's a satellite network, which he turned on for Ukraine. Right now, the Russians are shelling cell towers all over the country, so you can't really depend on that network. But Ukraine has had, you know, a fairly stable internet because of this satellite network. The other thing that's interesting is, is that I've heard reports that uh, when Ukrainians ask for information about, oh, can you send us a satellite photo of this town outside of Kiev? which might have troop movements or tank movements or whatever, various private operators who bought access to satellite time and space are providing these images just voluntarily to the Ukrainian government to assist them in defend their country. And that's a sort of significant change uh, in a war landscape from what we've seen before. It's fascinating stuff. So that Dreyfus, always appreciate you taking the time to provide your analysis. Thanks so much. Thank you very much.